Hi, it's Mr. Anderson and this is AP Physics Essentials video 59. It's on position, velocity, and acceleration. And in this video, I'm going to show you how to measure the position, determine the velocity, and then determine the acceleration. And if you want to feel that acceleration, then you should jump out of an airplane. And what's going to happen, your position is going to change over time. It's going to get more and more negative as your velocity increases in the negative because you're accelerating. Now eventually you'll reach terminal velocity where the force down of gravity equals the force of air resistance. It's over 100 miles an hour, but it's hard to see that in this video because the cameraman was traveling with the skydivers. They have the same frame of reference. And so if you really want to measure position, velocity, and acceleration, you have to remove yourself from that setting and then do some detailed studies to figure out what's really going on. And so if we take a position of an object, and here I've marked the center of mass, and we watch how it changes over time, so it's position at point one and two and three, now you can see that the time between each of those positions is the same, so its displacement is increasing towards the right. Its position is changing towards the right. That displacement is a vector towards the right. Now the displacement divided by the time is going to give us a velocity, and the velocity is a vector to the right as well. So if you think about it, since the time was the same between here and here, and then between here and here, we know the velocity is greater here because it's a greater displacement for a given period of time. Now how do we measure the change in velocity? Well, the velocity divided by time is equal to the acceleration. And so if we ever have acceleration, we know that there's a net force acting on that object or acting on that center of mass, and that the acceleration and the net force will always be acting in the same direction. So if we see acceleration, we know there's a net force at play. And so one thing you should be able to do right away is look at a position versus time graph and figure out is acceleration occurring or not. And so we have an object right here. I've marked the center of mass right in the middle. And what I'm going to do is let time progress and I'm going to graph the position over time. Now this object is not moving. And so what would the position versus time graph look like? It's going to look like this. In other words, its position is not changing over time. And so it's going to be a straight line, and it's also going to be a straight horizontal line that has no slope. And because it has no velocity, it has no speed. And so is there a net force acting on it? No, it's just sitting there. There's no change in its velocity, so there's no net force. Now let me show you another object. This object is going to have constant velocity. So it's always moving to the right, and it always has the same velocity. So what would the graph of that object look like? Well, it's going to be a straight line, but it's going to have a straight line that has a positive slope, or it's moving towards the right. And so at, every po at any point along this line, it has the same exact velocity. And what we can do is we can measure the slope of this line, and it would tell us the velocity at that point, which is the same throughout that whole time. Now, what would it look like if we have an object that's accelerating? And so you should kind of make a guess at this. But now we've got an object that's going slow, and now it's getting faster and faster. So what would the curve look like? It's going to look like this. And so that velocity is increasing. And so we're seeing a slope at the bottom of almost zero. It's not going anywhere. But then as we move far to the right, it has a really high velocity. And so that's an accelerating object. So there must be a net force that's acting on it. And I wanted to measure this, and so I used a piece of software called Video Physics in my phone, and I just went out and filmed a few things. And here I've got a car, and what I've done is set up the scale, so it's two meters from here to here. I set the origin right here at the center of mass of the car, and so I set that in the program, and then I just simply filmed it, and I marked the center of mass. And you can see that I wasn't perfect, but the center of mass is moving an equal amount over a given time. And so what does that mean? If we graph it, we're going to have a position versus time graph that looks like this. And so we're seeing each of these, this is the time on the x-axis and the position on the y-axis. And so what we have is a straight line. So what does that mean? We have a velocity that's constant. So it's moving with a constant velocity to the right. Now we can take like a graph like this and we can actually figure out the speed of that car. So the slope of that line, if it's about a 5 meter rise and a 0.7 second run, 
I just divide 5 by 0.7 and I get a velocity of around 7 meters per second using significant digits. And so that's around 20 miles an hour. And so it's constant. It's moving with constant velocity to the right. So what is its acceleration of the car? Well, since the velocity here and here and here is always the same, it's never changing, we have an acceleration equal to zero. And so that means if this object has a center of mass, there's no net force acting on the car. Now, are there forces acting on the car? For sure. There's friction and air resistance slowing it down. And then there's the actual ground pushing on it, uh, the wheels that's moving it to the right. But they're all equal. So those are balanced net forces. And so there's no acceleration. Let me show you what acceleration looks like. So I took a basketball and did the same thing. I measured, set the scale of the basketball, and then I just dropped it and mark that center of mass as it fell. And so what is the curve going to look like? Well, it looks like this. And so we've got, I set the origin right here at zero. And so in those first little bits of time, it's not moving very far at all. But we can see that it's accelerating, or the velocity is getting greater and greater in the negative. And so we're increasing the velocity over time. We know that acceleration is at play. Now, how could you figure out the velocity at any point along here? We just figure out the slope right here of this line, and that would tell me the velocity. You can see the slope right at the beginning is 0, but we're going to have a greater velocity as we approach the uh, bottom of the curve. And so the velocity is increasing in the negative. So how do I figure out what the acceleration is? Well, what I then did is graph the velocity versus time. So now we have a velocity of zero to start with. And then we see an increasing velocity as we move, as the ball fars, falls farther down. And so you can see that that's a straight line. And so what I can do is I can calculate the slope of that line, the slope of the velocity versus time graph, and that's going to give me the acceleration. And so we see around a negative 5 meter per second change over about a half a second as I measure this. And so we simply divide one by the other, and I have an acceleration of around negative 10 meters per second squared. Now you know the acceleration due to gravity is negative 9.8, and so I'm pretty close just using this crude uh, software. And so is there a net force acting on that ball? For sure. It's going to be in the negative uh, direction. Now there might be some air resistance in the opposite direction, but at this point, until we have too much air resistance, until we reach that terminal velocity, there's a net force down, and that's why we have a net acceleration in the negative value. And so did you learn to make predictions about acceleration and velocity of an object? Could you look at data and figure out if an object has a velocity? And if so, is it a changing velocity? Is it, is it accelerating over time? And then finally, could you use mathematical models or analyze graphical relationships to figure out the position, the velocity, and the acceleration? Again, I used video analysis in a physics lab. You could use a ticker tape, or you could use a motion sensor to do it. I hope that made sense, and I hope that was helpful.